Over the last few years, we have learned some very, very rich new vocabulary. In fact, a lot of the old definitions seem to have changed. And a lot of words that we kind of use for fun have now come into regular vernacular. One of the words I'm talking about here is gaslighting. California has become the king of manipulation on all, on all levels. And here's another story just to prove that point. Now I point out to the time when I worked for the federal government. And again, I say the number one lesson that I learned during that time was do not pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. And that is especially appropriate in California because we need the rain so bad and yet the lies come faster than anything else. So here we go. Once again, this is pink glue telling the truth. So this article came up. This was um, watching uh, funds that were spent. It was 20 million pounds were spent at, I think it was 80 different police stations in order to get these really nice looking new electric cars. Now, apparently there was nothing wrong with their gas vehicles, except they weren't electric, of course. So they spent all this money, but you know what? They stopped working and guess why? So you can um, click on the, the link there and find out, but it's okay, I'll give you a hint. But before we get to that, I'll let you know when I worked in uh, San Francisco for the federal government, they built a new building across the, the main street. And they, they built, they wanted it all eco-friendly. It was a green building. Everything about it was meant to raise the standard and quality of, of all humanity, right? They finally got people moved into it. And lo and behold, nobody thought that all those windows would need to be washed. And it cost almost three quarters of a million dollars the first year alone to wash those windows. And they didn't have it in the budget. That's not a standalone, this happens all the time. They then renovated a building down the street from us. And when, during the renovation, they um, wanted to go ahead and move in many departments. So they spent years renovating this building. And then as they were getting ready to move people in, they realized, wait a minute, we didn't have, we didn't make any accommodations to this very old building to run the networking cables for all the computers that are gonna come in the building. And so they had to create another subfloor to run the, the wiring underneath the subfloor because they couldn't change the walls because of a historic classification. But who, who goes through this process and doesn't think it out? So here you go, a waste of taxpayer money and no charging stations. What are they supposed to run power cords into their house? This is what we're living in. So I was looking at a, a video on Fox News, of course. He's talking about California bragging about a big achievement. This was um, actually um, 2021. They were bragging about what an amazing job they did. And California is known for rolling blackouts. They do it for manipulation. They do it to seize the grid. And we saw it during the, the main electric grid um, challenges that we had years ago that they were actually throttling it to get more money. It's an absolute abomination. But but as we look at this even further, in as California is pushing us to electric cars only, they point out you can't run electric cars without fossil fuels. So in this case, a single battery requires the processing using fossil fuels of at least 50 tons of ores. That's apparently dirty, so we're not doing that anymore. But what else is needed for a single battery? Tucker continues, 30 pounds of lithium, 60 pounds of cobalt, 130 pounds of nickel, 90 pounds of copper, 190 pounds of graphite, and roughly 500 pounds of steel, aluminum, manganese, plastic, and other Materials, you see some key words here that we don't want in, in our environment and that we might need for other sources. So as CNN um, notes here, local uh, water departments are cracking down on California. Now this is just another policing state, right? We're gonna make up rules that aren't attainable. We're gonna open our doors to a lot more residents and 
we don't have housing for them. We don't have enough resources. We're short on water and electricity. And yet, hey, move over, right? And by the way, we're short on jobs. Well, you know, not the low paying minimum wage jobs because they can come up with plenty of those. But any of the decent jobs to sustain the cost of living in the state are few and far between, especially now that we're hitting a skid in the economy. So what prompted all of this? The governor of California was celebrating that by 2035, no fossil fuel cars will be sold in the state of California. Well, that's wonderful if you have an abundance of money. In fact, we just saw that the, this administration announced that they were gonna bring back a, a, brighter, a, a wider swath of credits for electric cars. Well, who drives electric cars? Certainly not the person working two and three jobs with no medical insurance trying to put food on the table. Electric cars are expensive. And they're not only expensive in the way that they cost more than other vehicles. They're expensive in that you have to live in a location where you have access to, to plug it in. A lot of the apartment buildings don't even have direct access for plug-ins. If you're renting a home, you may not have a plug-in wall. But a lot of individuals are getting pushed out of their homes and apartments and are finding them, themselves, especially in Silicon Valley, in RVs or, or even less than that. They don't have a power grid to tie into and those solar panels that everybody's handing out are not gonna cut it. So what about this water? What do the rich do? Those individuals who have homes open, who do not want to rent them right now, because one, they own the home and they could do what they want with it. Two, understand that the changing laws in California make it so that the renter has rights over the landlord, so they don't want anybody to destroy their property or squat in their property, will actually leave them open right now until the law swings so it's safe to rent again. Because you can lose your property if you're a landlord right now in California. You have no right at all. And we just saw a building in Oakland where the tenants decided, hey, for two and a half years, we're just not gonna pay and we're all not gonna pay together until they finally took the, the landlord to court and the court decided, well, you know, you probably shouldn't have the building, let's give it to them. So they squatted in the property, re refused to pay on the agreement that they had with the person who owned the building. And it was a person, not a corporation. And then they sued and got ownership of that building. And now it's being divided up. I think it was 14 ways. I can't remember how large the property was, but they took it from somebody who owned it and gave it to those who weren't even paying rent. They're not responsible human beings. So what about water? Individuals are being told right now that you can water, at least in Northern California, in our area, we know that you're allowed to water two days a week, 10 minutes a time. So not only are we seeing the degradation of all the homes, people who have had established careers don't have the disposable income to keep up with their homes, and individuals like myself who have been trying to hire people to help, the contractors only want the big jobs, and those who are who normally the handyman roles are charging so much money, it, it's infeasible. The last quote I got was 250 dollars an hour with a three hour minimum for a handyman. At the minimum wage that I make, that's not gonna cut it. And quite honestly, it was hard to have an honor, a, a conversation with the gentleman to get a grasp at, of what tasks he was willing to, to work on. And this is where we're at. So back to the water, they're cracking down. Again, it's a policing state. If you're going over this, they're gonna go for citations and even arrests. But right now, an example of a home that's vacant that feels he cannot rent it because of what happened previously in a, in a situation, he's now paying a thousand dollar water bill to keep the lawn because if that lawn dies, by the time he's able to finally rent his property, nobody will want a prime property like that that looks shabby. Just like all the other streets in my neighborhood, Without lawn, it's unmanicured, it's dirty, it's dusty, and it just looks like crap. 
So again, they're using it to leverage because we know that a lot of our rainwater is shoveled off directly into the ocean. There's a mismanagement of the dams. And by the way, more people coming in, less resources, and just a general lack of responsibility for the water that we have. So here we go, back to California. California is pushing that by 2035, no more gas vehicles will be sold. This is from 2020. The mayor of Los Angeles, it says, hey, it's almost 3 p.m. 3 p.m., aren't you working? Aren't your kids either in school or, or doing their homework? This is a prime time. Turn off Time to turn off major appliances. Set the thermostat to 78. That's almost 80 degrees. Or use a fan instead of that AC. Turn off excess lights. Sit in the dark because this is a third world. And unplug any appliances that you are not using. You know, if that fridge down there doesn't actually have to be plugged in, why don't you unplug it for a little while? It's okay. You can You can replace all the food later. We need every California to help conserve energy. Yet, as this country found out, you need energy to run these cars. So here's something else. Producing electric vehicles is bad for the environment. They say green energy. They, this is the way to save our planet. Production of raw materials like lithium, cobalt, and nickel are essential to electric vehicles. Their technology are often ruinous to the land, water, wildlife, and people. And this we're talking about the creation, the production. We all know how bad the disposable factor is of these batteries. They will never dispose. They will be on this planet until this planet goes away. So we're going back to the dark ages. He states that just a year ago, Europe was a first world country. Rich start countries are starting to ration energy now. He gives the examples of Poland and Germany. Germany is foresting their own wood from trees, making into chips so they have something to burn. And it is August, my friends. What's going to happen when we get into the dead of winter over there? Did you know that this whole talk over global warming shifted to climate change because they realized, wait a minute, they couldn't quite substantiate that. But more people die in the winter months of freezing than they do during in, in the heat. So what is going to happen this winter when we don't have enough? There's not enough fuel. Well, here is, this is a speech, and if you look at the marker here, it's at uh, seven minutes, 50 seconds. I'm going to have this link below if you want to go ahead and grab it. But right before this, Trump in 2018 was telling the German government that you better watch out. If you don't decouple from Russia, then there's going to be a day when you will not have enough energy. You will be tied to them and you will be suffering. And then this is right after his speech. They're They're mocking him. Like, you fool. Yet, just because people don't like the facts of what is being said doesn't mean it's not true. And when you heed the lessons of others, you can learn a lot in your life. So what do we have today? The sanctions, and I have said over and over again, the sanctions that were placed on Russia is a joke. There were none placed on Russia. In fact, they counted that in 2022 alone, there's been over 3,600 oil ships coming from Russia to the United States. Really, there's a sanction? No, the sanction is on us. The joke's on us. The joke's on Western Europe. All of us who said, hey, we're putting sanctions on you. We're not buying the fuel. We're the ones suffering. And I don't, based on my understanding of global politics, we made a marketing play, gaslighting. And yet, actually, the sanctions were put on us. So what is this image here? Russia, because they're not selling all of their, this is natural gases. This is over right across um, from Poland, in my understanding. 
And in fact, Poland is really scrambling. They don't have enough fossil fuel or natural gases. And yet that's a burn off right now. They're burning, I think he said 10 million. I get, I, I don't know the quantity as far as, um, it's an, a massive amount that Russia is just burning off every day because people won't buy it. And yet they'd rather suffer instead and have their, their country turn into a third world country while all of this fuel is available. And you know what? Is the rest of it just sitting there in that country suffering? Absolutely not. The day the United States said, hey, we are punishing you, we're not buying anymore, was the day that that Russia went ahead and renegotiated agreements with other places around the world and sold it at a, at a profit, at a premium, it jacked it up because they knew that it was a better quality and they they could get, um, you, you know, it, on the market, they could go ahead and start selling it to other countries. So they did. Russia has made bank over this period of time while the countries around the world turn up their noses and pretend like they're the ones in charge. Did you know that Russia then made a, an agreement with Iraq? And and they, they went ahead, and you have to do additional processing for the use in the United States. So they went ahead and, um, and did some of the processing. But as you might notice, the fuel we've been getting is not the same quality in the gas tank. Your miles per gallon have probably gone down. But anyways, they do some refining and processing of it and then sell it back to the United States at multiples of what we would have paid if we just paid directly to Russia that we're buying it from anyways, but we're paying a middleman. Does any of this make sense? So I wanna say again, congratulations to California for such a big achievement, talking people into electric cars that they can't afford, that has a tight tether of what, 200 miles? not enough infrastructure to charge and not enough electricity to put through those charging stations. And they say, so goes California, so goes the rest of the world. Did you know that when the dot-com era ended, Silicon Valley alone was noted as the fifth largest economy on the entire planet. And these are the brainiacs making the decision. It's time to wake up. This is beyond just gaslighting. Seriously, stop peeing on my leg and telling me it's raining. Thank you for listening to Pink Blue Truth.